So going through your question papers, you're going to see that they are typical questions of this nature where you need to simplify or to determine the algebraic expression that you're given there. All right, so we are going to consider this. Let us just have a basic understanding of what that part there is uh, from and how do you simplify that? We understand that when we are given, uh, let's say this is x to the exponent of m over n, this can be given as the nth root of x being raised to the exponent of m. That is the way that you understand your exponents. Meaning to say that if I am given this simplification, I can rewrite this way. When having x to the exponent of a certain power and having the number inside of the root sign, I can reverse it to this way. Knowingly that the square root of x, there is a number that is the inside of the, the root sign. There is a 2 that is there, which we do not write. So whenever I have got a square root, I must know that there is a 2 inside. So let's say this is the square root of x to the exponent of 3. This is what I'm trying to say. Where was this actually taken from? So we saw that this x to the exponent of m under this nth root is from x to the exponent of m over n. m is the exponent just like this three. n is the number inside of the square root, inside of the root sign, inside of this root sign. So I said, if you have got a square root, the number inside of the root is a two. So this is x to the exponent of 3 over a 2. m over n. This is your m. This is your n. m over n. 3 over 2. So this can be very, very useful in simplification because if I am given, let's say I want to determine uh, the cube root of something that can be simplified. Let's say the cube root of 8, m to the exponent of 8. All right, let's, let's put this way, a nine there, something like this. The cube root of eight, m to the exponent of a nine. Take note about this. Take note about this. We know the cube root of eight. This is a number that we need, that like a number that multiplies itself three times. A number is multiplying itself three times. Which number is that? That's a two. So if you do not know, guys, no one is going to know that you have used a calculator in this examination. So just simplify. I'm just saying maybe the calculator is not needed on that particular question. So the cube root is just direct here on the square root above. So it is shift the cube root of 8. So this will give us a 2. So meaning to say we can simplify the cube root of 8, which is a 2. But the question is, what about the cube root of this m to the exponent of 9? What will be the cube root of that? So the cube root of this m to the exponent of 9, just like I was saying here, you reverse, to the exponent of m over n, m over n. So this is m to the exponent of 9 over the number inside of the root sign, which is a 3. You have removed the cube root on this number you have determined the cube root of that number. So this is 2m to the exponent of 9 divided by 3. Uh, that's a 3. That's it. Same thing like for your square root, whatever that you're given. Uh, let's say we are given the square root of 16x to the exponent of 8. So we need the square root of 16, the number that multiplies itself to give us a 16. But knowing that a square root must be plus or minus, Remember, if you have this, 4 times 4, that's a 16. Minus 4 times minus 4, that's a minus 16. So it follows that the square root of a certain number is plus or minus. For a cube root, there's no problem. But for a square root, you can write plus or minus the square root of 16, which is 4. 
Then, like I said, whenever you see a square root, there's a number inside of the square root, which is a 2. They do not write that for you, but you're supposed to know it. So that's x to the exponent of 8 over the 2, the number inside of the root sign. So that means we have the square root of everything, which is plus or minus 4x to the exponent of 4. 8 divided by 2, which is a 4. So that's, that's the case. So meaning to say I can simplify as many questions as I can. Here we are asked to determine this or simplify this part from what we are given. Uh, so like I said, number one, the square root of 4x squared. So we can determine the square root of 4. Uh, this is the square root of 4x squared. So the square root of 4, that is plus or minus 2. All right, we can determine the square root of 4 on our calculator. Uh, that one, if you're stuck, just use your calculator to simplify the square root of a 4. You have the answer. But like I said, for a square root, it's best that you write it as, as, as a plus or minus. It's best that you do so. So how do I simplify the square root of x to the exponent of 2? So it is going to be x to the exponent of 2 divided by the number inside of the square root, which is a 2. So that is going to be plus or minus 2x to the exponent of a 1, which is just x. So that is the, how you're going to answer this question. The square root of 25 x to the exponent of a 10, we can determine the square root of 25, which is the square root of 25 is what? It's a 5, but that's plus or minus 5. Then on the square root of x to the exponent of 10, the square root of that, it's x to the exponent of 10 over the number inside of the square root, which is a 2. So this will be plus or minus 5x to the exponent of 10 over 2, which is 5. That's how you do the square root. So it is the same thing even if you have it as a cube root or whatever that you have, like just number 5 there we are given. Uh, now this is the cube root. You need to simplify or to determine this cube root of 64. Uh, y to the exponent of 12. So the question is how? So we need the cube root of the number first. What is the cube root of a 64? So the cube root of a 64 is something that we can simplify. If you're stuck, just use your calculator there. The cube root of 64, that's shift here. Cube root on this one of 64. So this will give us a 4. Then on the y to the exponent of 12, we need the cube root of this. So the cube root of that one, that is the way we take the y to the exponent of 12 over the number inside of the root sign, which is a 3. So this will give us uh, 4y to the exponent of 12 divided by 3, which is a 4. So you can divide 12 uh, divided by 3, that is a 4. So that's it, you are done. For the cube root, you are done. So whether it's a negative number, we can determine the cube root of a negative number, just like number seven, uh, where we are given uh, the cube root in that case of negative 125y to the exponent of that. So it's the same thing. The cube root of minus 120, that's the first thing. Can we have that first? Before we talk of anything, we determine that. So this is the cube root. Uh, sorry, the cube root here of minus 125. Cube, where is that shift now? All right, the cube root of minus 125. So the calculator can simplify for that. That's a minus 5. So this is minus 5. But what about the cube root of y to the exponent of a 30? The cube root of this, it is going to be y to the exponent of a 30 over what? The number that is affect which is a 3. So that's minus 5y to the exponent of 30 divided by 3, that's a 10. Or on your calculator, 30 divided by 3, that's a 10. So meaning to say we can even determine the cube root of a square of a negative, which we can't do when dealing with the square root. The square root of a negative number does not exist. But the cube root can be determined. So I want you to try as many questions. So some of the questions, you have to add them, just like number 10, uh, the cube root of 8 
x to the exponent of 6 plus 19x to the exponent of 6. Remember that part of algebra, those like terms. We are big now. These are like terms to be considered. So you can add uh, 8 and 16. Uh, 8 and uh, 19, sorry. That is 8 and uh, 19, which is going to be 27. So meaning to say if we add these two numbers, we are going to obtain a 27 x to the exponent of 6, determining its cube root. So that means we're going to determine the cube root of a 27, which is 3. The cube root of x to the exponent of 6, which is x to the exponent of 6, over the number inside of the root sign, which is a 3. So this will be 3 x to the exponent of 6 divided by 3, which is a 2. So that's, it can be determined. So these are the typical questions, like I said, uh, just to uh, upkeep you for what is to come. You need to work through these typical questions. And if you consider number eight, number 12, where we are given uh, the cube root of four X cubed plus four X cubed. They just want to test your mind there. Two X to the exponent of five, to the exponent of three. These are like terms. They can be simplified to a single term. You are adding this to this, combine them together before you do any simplification. So this is equal to the cube root of what? These added together, four plus a four. That is going to be eight x to the exponent of three. Now we are back to that uh, situation that we had before. Remember what I said? A number or a bracket being raised to a certain exponent means this will be raised to the exponent of two, of three. Two to the exponent is two times two to three times, which is eight. So this is times eight. The same thing with the x to the exponent of five is going to be raised to the exponent of three. So it's x to the exponent of five to the exponent of three, five times three, which is a 15. So that's it. You have to be careful. So before you determine the cube root of these, just let us just simplify. Let us just multiply eight times eight, that is 64. We are multiplying these two, the bases that are the same. What do you do? You add the exponents. So this is x to the exponent of 3 plus 15, which is 18. So that's it. So at this stage, so the purpose of all this is to have a single term that we can work from, that we can simplify from. We are now back here. The cube root of 64, that is a 4. Then the cube root of x to the exponent of 18, you simply divide by the number inside of the root. So this is 18 divided by 3, which is going to be a 9. So it is all about uh, uh, the revision. That's, that's a 6. 18 divided by 18 divided by 3, guys. That's a 6 there, all right? Can you correct this one? 18 divided by a 3, that's a 6. My mind is tired now. All right, this is a 6. So these are the typical questions that you might be given. Uh, be very, very careful how you simplify your questions. So let's try as many questions as we can. Where there's a challenge, let's talk about that so that we can have a recap or a revision on that part. But I think everything is straightforward. But for now, that's it till we meet again.